right there, Shelpster. We're hooked up, and oh my gosh, we got so much going on in the boat right now. We have a fish on. We got, we got an underwater camera down. I was trying to get some cool underwater footage of this of this big pot of fish we're fishing for, and now I'm all, oh, he came off. Look at that, hyper rattling. First drop of the afternoon, and that is a dandy. That is a nice one. Wisconsin Valley right there. I'm just gonna go ahead and hand land them. And uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna really um, not focus a ton on the fish catching on this video. We're gonna focus very heavily on basically the locations at where we're finding these fish right now. And Surly hooked himself on the hyper rattle. But there you go, beautiful walleye. Smoked that Acme hyper rattle and he got it good. He's got it with two hooks and he even got Surly with the hook. Are you okay, Are you okay little Surly? That's the first time he's ever you, been hooked. You can't get too close to these things like that. But these things will hook absolutely everything. And like I was saying, what we're gonna talk about a lot today is uh, where you can find these fish right now in this whole midsummer time timeframe, this late summer time frame. really these fish push out deep and they really start grouping up solid on a lot of this deep stuff. We're hopefully gonna show you some underwater footage. We're gonna show you lots of hummingbird screens, screenshots. And we're gonna show you the exact kind of structures that I'm finding these fish on all late summer long. Let's let that guy go. Beautiful walleye right there. And just an unbelievably powerful way to catch those fish on that thing. I mean, the reason these two baits, this bait, this style of bait goes hand in hand with late summer for one reason. You have fish pushing out deep onto a lot of this main lake deep water structure. When fish are shallow, they spread out like this. When fish are deep, a lot of times they spread out vertically. So you have a lot of fish in a small area. And what you can do with this is see those fish drop, gets to the bottom extremely deep, in quick in deep water, and you can snap and work that bait very aggressively in front of a lot of fish at one time. So these two baits, or this style of bait in late summer go hand in hand, perfect tool. Let's get it done. All right, so how do you find a lot of these deep water summer spots? Well, it's really pretty simple. I always start with my lake map. Whether you're working with Lake Master, you know, no matter what you're working with, Lake Master obviously gives you the highlight which makes things a little bit easier. But you wanna be focusing on a lot of these humps that are in some of the deeper portions of the lake. So we'll kinda of start with the, kind of like your classic uh, deep water, like relatively clear, natural, northern Wisconsin, northern Minnesota, northern Michigan style lake, right? And a lot of times those depths we're looking at in the middle of summer are like 25 to 30, like right in that zone. So one thing I do is I'll come over to my hummingbird here and I go menu, menu, and I come right down to depth highlight. Now, I like, kind of like to set that at like the sweet spot. So what's like the magic depth? Um, you know, generally it's kind of right between those two things. So kind of that, you know, right in the middle of that 25 to 30 foot range, or maybe that 20 to 30 foot range. And I'm normally talking about like 26, 27, somewhere right in there. So we're gonna go 26 right here. And this is our depth highlight. Now the next thing we're gonna do is go to our depth highlight range. And I'm gonna crank that up to four. Now what that's gonna do is gonna highlight everything in green that's between 30 feet and 22 feet of water. So now if I go back to my map here, what I'm gonna see is a lot of these structures kind of starting to jump out at me here. Like here we got this beautiful ridge that runs across and the sweet spots a lot of times that I'm looking for are like the tails or the, slat, the saddles. Something that looks like that right there. And a lot of times that's gonna kind of be exactly what we're looking for. The other one you come down to this other side, here's a tail, but this one looks very intriguing right here. And a lot of this stuff kind of looks like it saddles into each other, right? And it's probably gonna be good. I'm not looking at like this 37 foot hump, but more of like this 28 foot hump right here with another 28 footer right next to it. You know, those are the kind of spots that I'm looking for. And one thing you're gonna notice by looking at this map is what I'm not doing is I'm not looking for like spots that are like in a, in a, in a very small basin. This is like the largest basin of the lake, right? A lot of the water around it, like you can see, is like 55 feet. You got 60 feet, 72 feet, 75 feet. So around very deep water. And one big push of fish that you see happens pretty much no matter where you're walleye fishing is that a lot of times these fish in the spring are gonna start out in that shallower base in the lake. Maybe there's an inlet there. Maybe it's that big shallow bay that's kind of mud bottom out into like 20, 30 feet of water, right? And then there might be another basin or it might break out to that, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 foot water um, with a whole bunch of hard bottom structure out there. And a lot of times, 
kind of, a, I would say, around that 4th of July on period, you kind of see a migration of fish from that shallower basin out to the bigger basin of the lake, right? And this kind of happens on everywhere. This happens on a lot of river systems. This happens on a lot of flowage systems. This happens on your big reservoirs. This happens in your big natural lakes. And it happens everywhere fish live and walleyes live and that we fish for walleyes, right? And uh, these are the kind of basins that we're really looking for, These this biggest main deep water basin of a lake in the middle of summer. The next thing we do is obviously go right to the graph and we start looking for structures that look something like this. You can see if I pan over this way, I'm in 75 feet of water. I come in this way, 26 foot hump. And here's a 20 foot hump with some deeper tails. 31 foot or 30 foot hump. Another 28 foot hump over here. And this is a great area to be looking at. Somewhere that has a lot of structure going on and a lot of interconnected deep water structure. This is definitely an area that holds walleyes and piques my interest in the middle of summer. All right, so we've located some of these humps on the map. And the first thing we're doing is obviously driving around and looking for fish. Now the beautiful thing about fishing in deep water is that a lot of times it can be done with exclusively sonar and down imaging. So we're looking for fish that are sitting generally up off the bottom a little bit. <coughs> and we're kind of cruising into one of these here. 25 feet, 24 feet, and it's just a little hump here. And all right, we're kind of seeing, eh, we're not really seeing it yet. We're gonna keep driving through it. And uh, I can tell it's hard bottom. Got some rock down there, as you can kind of see. Nothing like real big, flashy rock quite yet. And basically what we're looking for is a pot of fish that's gonna be a whole bunch of red marks. Kind of, uh, there's like one there. We're not really seeing what we want to see yet. Now I'm kind of dropping back down. We're in some good rock. And a lot of times this is just kind of crisscrossing structure. So all I'm gonna do now is dropping back off. And I'm gonna kind of just shoot right back around and come over the top. And a lot of times it's kind of what it is. Because a lot of times if you're fishing hard rock or gravel, you're not really gonna see those fish. There's another just loner fish. But what I really want to see is a big pot. But you're not really gonna see a lot of those fish on side imaging. So what I'm looking for is mainly spotting these fish, like I said, on sonar and down imaging. So it's a lot of this just kind of zigging and zagging back and forth. And all right, that is exactly what I'm looking for. This is not a very big pod. And if you're not used to looking at a lot of this stuff, this might look very um, not, not, not important to fish. There's a big rock right here. So first thing, I'm gonna take a screenshot for you guys so you guys can see what I'm looking at. Now, if you look at this screenshot on sonar, it doesn't look very impressive. If you look at the screenshot on down imaging, you can tell that's a bunch of fish sitting very close together. And I'll kind of zoom in on it here, and you can see it a little bit better now. I'll go ahead and take another screenshot for you on down imaging. Now, this is the kind of stuff that I'm looking for. This is not like a crazy pod of fish, uh, but up here in northern Wisconsin, these are the pods of fish that we're picking apart a lot of time. That is the perfect pod to drop into with something like the Acme Hyper Rattle. So that's just real quick, gets down to those fish immediately, and you can fish for it real fast. And you can see it's the perfect example of why you want to be running sonar and down imaging. Um, they both have their advantages, but down imaging a lot of times gives you that real crisp. You can literally count the fish. Like there's probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven fish in that tight little bundle. And a lot of times what that is, it's a pod of very similar sized walleyes, a lot of eater walleyes most of the time. They're kind of packed very close together. And a lot of times what they do is they kind of run around a spot real quick. And uh, that's why something, like, again, like that hyper rattle is perfect and why the hyper rattle and fishing these deep rock cups just go so hand in hand really from now until turnover. So, um, and a lot of times what you see might see if this is a bigger spot. So we're actually, I just unfroze my sonar again and I'm seeing more fish here again. Um, and I'll kind of take another screenshot. But basically a lot of times, um, you know, you might see two, three, four, five pods of fish like this on a spot, right? And you can kind of waypoint each of them and go back through them. Or you can just kind of buzz around with your motor and uh, drop hyper rattles or stuff like that and it'll be effective. So that's kind of what we're looking for. That's not a super impressive screenshot, uh, but a lot of times it's not just fishing that, that, you know, it's not that sonar shot that's just like arcs all over the place, right? A lot of times we're picking apart these schools of five to 10 fish that are really flying around these deeper rock structures in the middle today. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, we brought the Markham Quest HD out, little underwater camera, um, which we have been using for a while now. Very cool camera. And uh, we're gonna show you some of these fish, kind of <coughs> give you an idea of what these pods of fish look like. It's pretty deep and this lake's not super clear, so I'm not sure how clear the footage is gonna be, but we should be able to see some of these fish. So the goal is to hopefully spot lock over them and uh, um, drop the camera down and maybe see some fish. Let's see what we see.
All right, so now we're coming into another rock comp here, and this one says it tops out at 29, 28, and uh, same thing. Um, we're gonna cruise around and look for fish and kind of show you guys what they look like and I'll kind of interpret, I guess, on what I see. So um, we're in 37 right now. We got a lot of deep water around us. This is kind of one of those primo situations. We got a lot of deep water. That hump that kind of tops out in that perfect depth. I can tell it's a hard bottom hump, and uh, yeah, we're cruising over it right now. It's not a super big spot, but it kind of saddles into a lot of other stuff. So um, these are the kind of spots that a lot of times have a lot of potential because even if the fish aren't right on top, they might be on the saddle, they might be on the top of this next one. It just has a lot of holding power. And you can kind of see we're starting to come up onto the top of this thing now. We're in 30 feet and uh, not seeing, well you can tell it's kind of gravelly down there. Yeah, definitely rocks down there. And we're looking right now. You're on the, okay, so now we're seeing exactly what we want to see. And I'm gonna go ahead and take a screenshot. I don't know how well the GoPro's picking all of this stuff up. I'm gonna take a screenshot of this. So what we have here is probably a walleye or two walleyes on the bottom. We also have a cluster of like two or three walleyes up higher in the water column. And uh, that's exactly what we're looking for. Now, that's not a crazy stack of fish, but I'm guessing if we just kind of circle around where we saw that, like you can tell now we're just doing a big swing. Uh, we'll probably see some more fish. And whenever those fish are elevated like that, I always like that. That is always a good thing in my book. Kind of keep putting around here. Not seeing a lot yet, but like I said, this is such a small little top. <coughs> we kind of might just have to get right on top. 28 feet, so we're pretty much on the top of it right here. 27, 28 ish. Maybe there's just not another pot of fish here. Sometimes that's the way it goes. We'll see if we can mark another one for you guys. All right, right there. That's exactly what we're looking for. Waypoint, throw it on a waypoint. If you got a hyper rattle, jigging ramp handy, something like that dropped into those fish. So I'm gonna screenshot it right here. <coughs> and I kind of hit those fish going fast because I was doing that quick corner. But that's actually probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine fish, somewhere right in there. And you can see they're probably about you know, three feet up bottom, you know, here's the bottom, obviously, fish are sitting up a little ways, and that's exactly what we're looking for, right? And those two pods I marked, I dropped waypoints on both of them, they're only about 15, 20 feet away from each other, and uh, so there's definitely a decent amount of fish in that little area for me to catch, and uh, I like the fact that those fish are up off bottom. A lot of times that tells me those fish are probably larger fish, um, at least just in my experience, but that's exactly what I'm looking for. I don't know if that was impressive on you guys to the graph, but that is the exact kind of stuff that I am looking for when I'm fishing a lot of this deep rock. So, you know, just remember that if you are fishing this deep rock and you see just like one fish, always zig and zag and loop de loop and go over the top and the sides of that thing a number of times. Because a lot of times, um, you just obviously can't see those fish if they're off the side of you on side imaging when you're fishing that very hard bottom. And a lot of times if there is a mark, a couple marks there, you could loop around it a few times and find even more fish. So that's exactly what we're looking for. We're gonna drop the camera down and uh, see what we see. I got one. Hooked up. Shelster's on. What do you got? Just a little guy. I had a feeling you were gonna catch one right there. Oh, look at that. Can you grab them for me? We're actually still taking some underwater footage. And uh, Shelster took a few casts and got one. What do you think? All right, so the next thing we're gonna look at is one of these humps that's not solid rock, right? And definitely a lot of these humps that are just plain sand can definitely can hold fish in this midsummer time frame as well. And the big difference is, is when you're looking for fish, obviously side imaging comes into play um, when you're looking at just plain sand because those fish show up very well when it's plain sand. So um, we're coming up, we still got a little ways to go, we're in 40 feet here. <coughs> Top of this thing I want to say is like 25, 26. I don't exactly remember. But most of the time, late summer, there are fish on this hump. So we'll cruise 
screws over it here at CVC. We're still in 40, and that's important. You know, it's not like we're fishing a 27 foot hump in 28 feet of water. A lot of basin, a lot of deep water around this. We should be coming up on this thing in a second or two here. 37 feet, 36 feet, 35 feet. Coming up on top of the hump here. And any moment now, we should start to see fish. Okay, now we're kind of in the zone. We're in less than 30. I'm not seeing any of the good stuff yet. But you can tell it's a lot of sand on both sides of me. We've got one kind of phantom mark. Okay, so this is exactly what I'm talking about. I'll take a screenshot because I'm not sure how well this is going to show up on the GoPro. Now, I'm actually going over some fish vertically at the same time right now. So I'm going to screenshot this right here. Now, what you see on my sonar is a pot of fish, right? And it's not a super big pot of fish, but it's probably, you know, several fish right there. Now, this over here on side imaging off my right is another pot of fish, right? And that is one thing that you could not see if you're fishing solid rock. So if you're fishing a lot of this deep water and it's either you know soft bottom or sand like a lot of these deep humps or points are going to be, um, definitely run that side imaging because it makes the whole process much quicker, right? So obviously you can waypoint that deeper pod that you saw in sonar right there. You can waypoint the pod you saw in side imaging. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to flip back here. And now I know that pod was just a little bit this way of that first pass we drove over them here. So we'd probably be able to hit that pod with sonar if I can get right over the top of them. It looked like they were about 30 feet off my side, right? So I'm just gonna skirt my last um, trail over the top of this. I'm just gonna come 30 feet this way. And we should probably see those fish or at least be close to them. Again, I would assume anyways. The other thing you can do is kind of waypoint them to speed this process up. All right, so there's a few fish still farther off my left on side imaging. Yep, so they're still off my left here. So all I'm gonna do is just zig around one more time here. This is the nice part about doing this. You know, you can get a very good idea of where these fish are just with one pass over the spot with side imaging. I don't know how well that was picked up on the GoPro, but I'll go ahead and screenshot it for you guys right there so you can see. Throw a red circle around them so you can see those fish. All right, so now I've hit these fish right on the head. And now I'm gonna just let my boat get a little bit past it, and I'm gonna take a screenshot for you guys with down imaging and sonar. So you can see the first time I came over this spot, basically what happened is I saw those fish, I saw one pot on sonar, I saw another pot off my right. I zigged and zagged back a few times, worked over the top of those fish, and now I'm gonna take another screenshot here, even though I just took a screenshot, and I'm gonna kinda of show you what I got going on. And this is quite a bit. You can see I got a few fish close to bottom, and then a bigger pod a little bit off bottom. So use the tools available to you, and uh, you know, obviously it, it, it's super productive, super easy to find fish on these deep water humps in the summer. And each of these little sequences we've done, these three sequences of driving around looking for fish, these are all scenarios where I would fish for those fish, right? Now if I drove around a whole spot and I saw like one fish here, one fish here, one fish here, I probably wouldn't fish that spot, right? But if I'm seeing stuff like I've showed you guys in the last three, you know, three little sequences of finding fish, um, these are definitely pods of fish that I am interested in fishing and definitely enough fish for me to stop and drop a hyper rattle, um, drop some live bait, do whatever I got to do to catch those fish into them. All right, well that is gonna kind of wrap it up for today's video. Hopefully this is beneficial for you guys. Um, hopefully you enjoyed kind of seeing basically what I'm looking for and I'm fishing a lot of these deep summer humps and how to find a lot of these deep summer humps. And if you want to utilize an underwater camera, it's obviously a great tool as well. I'll go ahead and link to Markham down below if you're looking for an underwater camera. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed some of that underwater footage. I always like doing the underwater footage. I never feel like I do enough of it um, in the open water season, but hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And uh, yeah, anything else to add, Shelby? I'm hungry. <coughs> Shelby's hungry, so <laughs> we gotta get out of here. It's like a ticking time bomb. We gotta get back to the ramp home and eat some food. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. We got some fun plans coming your guys' way. Um, some adventures for the next several days here. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. But I appreciate you guys watching. If you're not yet, please subscribe. Stay tuned for more. We'll see you next time.